so this has been a theme for me and my life at least for the past several months i'm just sitting in my room or i'm just walking on campus between classes and boom i just think of this simple phrase the bite of 87. <laughs> Hey guys, I think the little man said he wants to give Fred Bear a big kiss. On three, one, two. Was that the bite of 87? The bite of 87. Now that is a wonderful, wonderful phrase. Because you see, it alludes to five nights at Freddy's. Boom! Um, for me personally, five nights at Freddy's has mostly been just something that is funny in my mind. Because like, come on, it's... It's someone made a game <laughs> that's about animatronics that attack people and kill children and there's dead so like it's so it's so morbid and anxiety inducing that there's humor there's humor in it. <laughs> the reason why Five Nights at Freddy's is on my mind really at all. <laughs> I mean, yes, I played it when it came out in 2014 and like everyone was playing it. I played it on my iPod Touch or something. Did I have an iPhone at that point? I don't know. And I got some night four, you know? Pretty pretty good for a first try, but I wasn't super invested. <laughs> and I played it with the lights off in my bedroom, I remember that, to add to the horror ambiance. But really most of my relationship with Five Nights at Freddy's, my relationship, it's, it's connected to my cousins, Melissa and Connor. They know they they are well versed in the Five Nights at Freddy's lore. And let me tell you, there's a lot of lore, a lot of dead children's souls living in animatronics. Five Nights at Freddy's first was birthed into this world on August 8th, 2014 via Steam. Uh, Scott Cawthon utilized the Steam Greenlight program to promote and ultimately release for purchase his title known as Five Nights at Freddy's. Essentially, the premise of the game is you have been newly hired as the night guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which is a family pizzeria where kids have birthday parties and then the animatronics, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Freddy, perform songs for the kids, hug them, bite them. No, no, not the bite them. Then you're also stationed in this small little office. It has a nice, has a nice Freddy, Freddy Fazbear poster over there. And you got your fan that's just going <laughs> making noise kind of eerily in the background, but also like loud, like it's, it's a pronounced white noise. So as night guard, you have your security cameras that you can flip between. This is a point and click game. The thing is, the animatronics, they start, they start, they start coming for it. Like, okay, you see them getting closer via the security camera screens, and then eventually they're in your doorway, they're right outside the door, and you're like, oh, geez. And you gotta close the door to get them to go away. <laughs> but you have limited power supply, so you wanna be cautious about how much you use the doors. And Ultimately, you're trying to avoid being attacked by an animatronic and killed. <laughs> Specifically, the, the game is known for its jump scares. You just, for five nights, you're working there. Every night, you want to make it through each night to get to the five nights at Freddy's. Survive. Huzzah, huzzah. Now, the horror of the game, as Scruffy, YouTuber Scruffy, said on his channel, really, really relies on... Um, a lack of information and a lack of action. There are the high stakes of jump scare death by animatronic right there in front of you. And you, 
there's you're stuck in your one room you're just the night guard and there's just the animatronics out and about oh spooky oh as a horror game it's really fun to watch because you're it's like oh is the jump scare gonna happen which just brings so much tension and promotes like really big reactions when you're when youtubers like markiplier are playing and like playing the game and like they're in such a high state of anxiety like clicking frantically between screens and being like oh my gosh there's chica and it's entertaining to watch it promotes a lot of reactions and if it's entertaining to watch on youtube that's gonna grow your game there's no order to be found there's no order to be found all right go do go do it 5 a.m i can make it i can make it even with that door closed you stay there all you want i can make it i can make it i can make it you sassafras you son of a bitch shove it up your ass no 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 what did i do that for it's the wrong button okay yeah, yeah, all right the follow-up game was five nights at freddy's 2 which came out that same year as Five Nights at Freddy's 1, but a few months later, November 10th, 2014, also on Steam. It's available on Microsoft Windows, iOS, Android. It was also a horror game about being a night guard, keeping away the animatronics, but there was also a lot more lore introduced in this game via the via Atari-style minigames. For example, the Purple Man. What is this Purple Man doing? Killing? What? Who is this purple man? Then next came along Five Nights at Freddy's 3 on March 2015. So just a few months after. Really, these games are coming out. Scott Cawthon is going crazy. <laughs> also via Steam, Microsoft Windows, iOS, Android. This one's set totally different. Now we're like, it's a horror attraction themed around five the, the freddy fazbear's pizza and all the tragedies that have taken place there and this this is also a horror game there's also there's also the mini games lore lore galore so yes that's a key part of this series the immense volume of lore there is so much lore the timelines are so tangled there's so many youtube videos trying to piece together is who's William Afton uh, who, who made the animatronic why is this kid crying what uh, who which when was the bite well not when was the bite of 87 we all know when the bite of 87 was it was an 87 <laughs> but really putting all the events in order you're getting fragments of information like why is what's what's up with these animatronics um there's books about it YouTube videos YouTube videos galore piecing together all the clues and hints within the games. By July, we got Five Nights at Freddy's 4, also on Steam, Microsoft Windows, Android, iOS. This one's taking place in a child's bedroom who's like scared of the animatronics and is thinking about them. Um, again, you got doors, you got darkness, you got flashlights. You gotta keep away the animatronics. And there's always the threat of the jump scare. Um, then finally, we got a not a numbered title. This is Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location in October 2016 for Microsoft Windows. Uh, for this one, instead of like really short soon after, like it took, it took a few months before it was also released on Android and iOS. Now this game stood out to me particularly because there's multiple different rooms you can go in, more so than the other games. Whereas like Five Nights at Freddy's, the first one was confined to that, just that one room. This game has multiple locations you can go in. You crawl through vents to get to them. I have to say, I feel like this game leans more into the humor of just the absurdity of the franchise. It's extensive morbidity and child death and how this is a horror game. It kind of pokes fun at it with um, this character named Hand Unit who is guiding you on what to do. He's He's a little bit of a jokester. He, like literally one of one of the things you have to do in the game is motivate the animatronics by administering electric shock to them. And we already know. We know these animatronics are trying to get us. Why would we want to anger them? But no, we just we just have to do that. Just 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 motivate them. Motivate them with an electric shock. That's a great idea. And then eventually uh, the franchise gets a little bit even kind of kind of veers away. It doesn't completely go away from horror at this point but with five nights at freddy's pizza simulator which came out in december 2017 it's it's kind of a reminiscent of diner dash sort of game um where you're running the pizzeria you're running the business you know you're making pizza you're repairing the animatronics 
then we got Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Custom Night in June 2018. So, you know, you can make your own custom night. <laughs> with like, ah, oh, with these animatronics, you can adjust the difficulty. But in May 2019, we got VR coming in with Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. Um, eventually, they produced a non-VR version as well, like a few months later, or six months, no, seven, seven months later in December for Microsoft Windows and PlayStation 4. Also, speaking of PlayStation 4 and whatnot, uh, all the original Five Nights at Freddy's game, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 4 were all released on the PS4 as well as Xbox One and Switch um, in 2019. And finally, most recently, we have Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach came out December 2021 on PS5, PS4, and Steam. Now this game is very notable in that you have the whole complex to explore. There, we got glam rock animatronics now. It's set, it's set in the 2020s. Um, but yeah, there's big rooms to explore. Like you're not, you're not confined. You're really not confined in this one. There's, it's massive. <laughs> For, for Five Nights at Freddy's anyway. However, Security Breach is littered with glitches. So many glitches. Obviously, Five Nights at Freddy's has been outputting game after game after game for so long. This isn't the first time their games have had glitches. Security Breach now actually has so many striking glitches. My cousin takes screenshots of all of them as he's playing the game, and then he shows them to me when I come over his house. For example, the <laughs> nighttime security guard, Vanessa, who, who you are not playing as, you are observing, you know, sometimes her hair just like goes like <laughs> all over the place, very unnatural. <laughs> uh, a lot of the time there's multiples of the animatronics when there's only supposed to be one in existence in the whole complex. Like sometimes 20 Montgomery Gators just start appearing for Especially in the cutscenes, they have... <laughs> Sometimes there's just an animatronic standing there that's not even supposed to be there for that scene, and it doesn't make sense that they're there because they're supposed to be in a different room in, as part of the storyline. And now specifically, <laughs> a major mechanic in the game is that you, you are this young child, Gregory, and you go inside the Freddy animatronic. You go into his chest cavity. Uh, you enter his chest cavity and play the game via that but there's literally a glitch in the game such that if you hit the jump button while the you were in the process of entering freddy freddy's chest cavity that like the whole setting of the game would be like some weird void thing and you could access any room in any part of the game just from there so people were using that to speed run the game in <laughs> in three minutes or less, <laughs> which is very fast speed run. Now they've patched that glitch, that major glitch, but Con my cousin Connor, he's upset with how they patched it. They really did it lazily, and I agree, because um, they just made it, they just disabled your ability to jump, to hit, like, to have the jump button do anything while you're entering the chest cavity, and hence you can't go to the void because you can't jump now, which is really a band-aid fix. So yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's, horror, jump scares, creepy animatronics, insane, complex, extensive lore about dead children, souls possessing animatronics, and murders at a restaurant. Very large YouTube presence in terms of both YouTubers playing the game and those making videos deep documenting all the theories surrounding the lore of the game and you know uh, my cousin actually gave me this hat it's a bonnie bonnie bunny the animatronic and he was only willing to give me this hat though because you see bonnie's like the eyes are blue but bonnie's eyes are red 